Welcome back to another episode of the Top 6 Show. Liverpool Football Club <clears throat> close to completing the signing or have completed the signing according to some media outlets of Darwin Nunes. The big hijack has taken place. Even though there were reports that I hear Eric Ten Hag flying off to Portugal, desperately trying to convince him to stay. On top of that, we're going to be delving into some other big transfer stories doing the rounds today, including Chelsea Football Club going in for Gabriel Jesus. The deal has been reported as on and active. Arsenal still leading the way. We're going to delve into that and have a bit more of a debate and conversation as well. Any questions you have for the panel today, feel free to get them in. But Liverpool fans, I want to go to you first, especially you, Izzy. Izzy's joining us today. We've got David here. Have hopes on his way, by the way. Tom's with us. And of course, my brother, Neeks, is in the house. Happy birthday for the other day, by the way, Neeks. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, 21 again, 21 again. 21, I know. <laughs> shared it. Shared it from my verified account for you, bro. It was all good. Shared it out there. <laughs> it was all good. But listen, the big... Actually, we'll, we'll start with Darwin Nunes because it feels like it's pretty much done now. You've had... The Liverpool tier ones have come out and started talking about personal terms being done. Uh, the, I mean, the Portuguese press very early hours of, of the morning said the deal is done and over the line. How are you feeling about it, Izzy? Are you excited or are you a little bit... Like some Liverpool fans are really angry that this deal is going ahead. I've, uh, I don't get the anger thing to, like, for starters. It's not my money. It's not anyone's money. It's, like, it's the club's money. People are talking about the transfer fee like... It's just weird because it's the same people that will say they want us to go make a statement signing. They don't want us to go. They don't want us to be shopping with Lidl. They want us to be shopping at MS. But then as soon as you start spending big, they start crying like it's their own piece. Like it, it makes no sense. So for, from that point of view, I'm a bit like, to me, the fee doesn't matter. As long as we, as long as we get value for money, he's 22 years old, and we hope he's going to be with us for about eight to nine years of his of his best years. So I'm, I'm cool with that. And the signing, obviously, it's it's a risk, but sorry, sorry, but it's a risk, but. I trust Klopp. I trust FSG. They've not given me many reasons to not trust them. In, the, in their seven years that they've been with the club, you can maybe say two or three of our big signings have not worked out of about twenty odd. So I'm I'm cool with it, man. I'm excited to see what happens. Like, we'll just we'll see if they if that's the if that's the man Klopp wants and FSG have backed him. I can't have any I can't have any debates for that. I, I get I get that. There's a super there's a comment here, sorry, that says Nunez is a glorified Lukaku. Watch him play. He's tough. He's dead, and he looks way too clumsy. Like, who agrees with that assessment of Darwin Nunes? Okay, that may be a little bit extreme, but look, what is the whole point of YouTube compilations? YouTube compilations is what helps. It's, they just show you the, the best bits. YouTube comps is why we're, we're stuck with that um, dimwit moron, loser piece of crap, Werner, at this club. Because Marina, one late night at 1 a.m., she had too much to drink. She just searched who's trending on Twitter. She watched Venner's YouTube comps and now we're not stuck with this moron. I watched Nunez's YouTube comps. So if this is the best that this dude can do, I wasn't impressed. So see, so that's why I want to ask you Liverpool fans, I'm confused because I know Klopp has an amazing eye for, for, for talents. Lewandowski was selling fruits before um, Klopp found him on the on the streets as a, as a freaking orphan boy. So this guy made Gundogan, he made Lewandowski, he found Hummel. So this guy knows how to find talents. And what I can't really understand, because I get what you're saying is that, bro, look, what's, what's the saying? Tick. Tick. Trust in Klopp. So if we're following Tick, you just have to just hope and have faith that somehow he sees something in Nunes that we don't see. But from what I see, look, like, this guy looks clumsy. Let's, let's go. This guy looks like the Uruguayan BFG. Because this guy takes, like, 3,000 years to, to do one turn. And so I'm like, bro, I, like, if that's the best, he don't look good, bro. He doesn't impress me. So I'm confused. Does he, does, do, all right, let me put it to you like this here. Yeah. On the ball, strictly on the ball, let's not talk about all the other attributes. Mm. Does he look any more clumsy than Haaland? Because for me, they look very similar with how they move the ball. So if you're going to yeah. say, I'm, I'm pretty similar, sure everyone similar. in this chat would take Haaland in a heartbeat. So for me, it's just like, you can't say one is just clear. Uh -huh, but there's a difference on the ball. There's a difference though. Haaland is class C, class B, brick. the guy has zero tech. We are, we are, we are, we don't understand this. But the thing but is, he's, but he's, a, he's, but a, he's a bad man, isn't it? The difference though is that, we saw what Haaland was doing with, I think it was a salt book in the UCL. We saw what he did in the UCL with Dortmund. So people are not looking at Haaland for his technique and so forth. He's in like a David Villa or like your boy Raul. It's, oh, this guy's an amazing goal scorer. So this guy can be a really good finisher. Forget about the other tech, he's a really good finisher. So my thing with Klopp is that, is Klopp thinking to himself, okay, look, 
I want to, I think what we need is, what was Liverpool's big issue for this season? You could create and so forth. Nobody could really finish. Look at those chances against Real Madrid. We need to just, I just need to just get a guy who is a really good finisher. I can refine chop away at the rough edges, but let's just get a guy who is a damn good finisher because what was missing was that we had all the chances, but we didn't have a guy who is a cold-blooded finisher in there. Firmino, he's on the decline right now. Mane, he's not a natural striker. You can play him there, he's not a natural striker. You already sold or Origi. Salah, that's an inside forward. That's not a striker. So you need that threat through the middle who can get your goals. And that's probably what he's trying to look at at Nunes. But I, I think it's more than just having somebody who's a, a cold body finish or anything like that. It's also having a different option. Live, uh, Liverpool's forward line, other than Origi, who, you know, was like super sub. And even then in the last year or so, he didn't really use him as much as he did in the previous two. So it was it's another option. I'm not saying Darwin Nunes is going to be a super sub. But when you got crosses, especially like Trent, you need to have an aerial threat. You can't be crossing the ball to Mane 25 times a game and expecting that's going to solve it. And Liverpool have struggled at times where, uh, it's, it's hard to say struggled, they, they've finished 90 odd points, but that's the level that's been set. So I, I'm going to use that term. They struggled at times when it's like, all right, we, we can't break up, find our way through. It's a low block, etc. Let's get some crosses into the box. You got an aerial threat. It makes it that much easier to, to make those crosses, those dangerous crosses, turn them into goals. So it's not just about being a you know a finisher. If if uh, Salah was as clinical as an Erling Haaland, you still might want to get a Darwin Nunes because of the different uh, threat that he offers. I think it's I think it's also. I, that I, I think I think that's a big part of it, Nick. I think you're spot on, mate. I look at the fact that City have signed two strikers, two number nines. One's leaving, but they've signed young Alvarez and <laughs> Haaland's still young and. They are going to play very different football next year. This, the style changes. Man United did it. In, it Go back to our pomp. You had Ronaldo that was the main goal scorer. You had two. They weren't number nine strikers in, 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 in Rooney and Carlos Tevez. Sort of playing off of him as an example. But within a few years, yes, you were kind of forced into a change because Ronaldo left. But we ended up eventually, next time we had a really good winning title winning team, it was a few years later when Robin Van Persie came in as a traditional number time with Rooney in a 10 role. You have to adapt and evolve. And I think Liverpool are being very, very sensible here because at the end of the day, if you keep playing the same way, week in, week out, year in, year out, with the same... They, if you just take out Firmino and bring in another kind of false nine, kind of defensive striker, you're easier, you're more predictable. You've got to do something different. And I think too many people are reading into this passing stat. Didn't you say, I want to play Dre, didn't you say, um, Tom, that... Harlan's past completion rate is something yeah, like only five percent yeah. better. So, so it was in the Champions League last year. Um, Darwin Nunes had something like fifty-six percent pass accuracy, and Erling Haaland had fifty-nine. So it's really not that big a difference. What I'm seeing with Darwin Nunes, and I'm a massive fan. I've got to be honest. I want him to lose the man bun, let the hair flow, remind me of Prime Fernando Torres because that's what he reminds me of. He's a very, he's still very raw. He's still, he's not exactly the tight close control dribble air. He's not got this touch tight control, but he's a cold blooded killer in front of goal. And that's what we need because both City and Liverpool, like you were saying, we're changing styles. We're going for natural number nines up top that are big, have a presence in the box, can win the headers because it's what undone both of us last season when in them games where they dropped points, it was, you know, you're fine at getting 90% of the way and then you get to the 18-yard box where they're camped and you can't do anything. So Nunes coming in will change that. He can play on the wing as well. So if we do need to go back to that false nine, but we still want that presence, he's there. I just think it's a brilliant signing and he's only 22. He's got so much room to grow. Everything that you can't teach a player, everything that you want a player to have that you can't teach, the instinct, the, the natural finishing, the natural ability and the physicality, he's got it in abundance. So everything that he needs to learn... He's got the best manager for developing players there. I, I, I think I, I think Tom's actually makes sorry just just he makes a really good point because I think what we may be seeing a shift in football because I felt that what's it called O nine when Pep came in and so forth he changed football in the sense of you don't really need a striker you can play a false nine and we saw what Spain did let's just have a whole bunch of midfielders have a false and if these guys are amazing passes off of the ball and so forth we don't need a striker because these midfielders are smart enough to create chances for themselves and score so. Klopp and thinking about, okay, inside force, inside force. But I think what they've now realized is that we have to go go old school. 
We have to go old school and just get that old school, good old physical presence striker through the middle who can score goals because but maybe you know, that is what's been missing. But that also happens all the time. I mean, you, you mentioned Pep in 2009, but since Pep's brilliant Barca team in 2009, you've had the treble winning team of and um, of Jose Mourinho that used a traditional number nine. You've had Bayern Munich win trebles with Lewandowski as a traditional number nine. You've had Tottenham nearly win everything with a traditional number nine. That's a big. But like, the, the number nine has never gone away. You just go through these. It's a bit like with the Trent stuff. Now, Trent's statistics of outputs are huge. But as and when Klopp or the new manager after Klopp changes the system slightly, and maybe <clears throat> the creative outlet isn't directly the fullback, they're playing a slightly different role, the level of assist he gets might change because the system is forced into changing because of the evolution of football. And every three to four years, teams kind of change. If you'd have gone back to 2009 and said, oh, within six years of this, no one will be playing tiki-taka football, you'd have been called an idiot. But no one's planning it anymore because new systems or evolutions come along that beat it and you have to keep evolving and changing. Uh, Luke here of a Super Chat <clears throat> says, mad to think that Nunes will be on the same money as Eddie and Ketia after he... that is crazy. Aston that are trash, crazy. man. I know Aston are yeah. shameless. Aston are shameless. They are so shameless. Bad contracts, money, isn't it? Useless. No, useless. I can't. They're celebrating Lacazette going on a free. Like this hasn't just happened. They've just got another yeah. crap version of Lacazette for another five years. But he yeah. got he got a brace against Chelsea. So the future's there. This is the moment Eddie and Ketia finally breaks through. I can't, man. There's a reason he's England's under 21 record goal scorer. That's not something that anyone wants to have. That is not an award anyone wants. Nah, that's true. Got, All the good players got, make it to the to the senior team before they even get a chance to break the record. <laughs> we've is, made. Man. We've got some breaking news here that says uh, Bayern Munich have improved their Mane offer one million up front, fifty million add-ons if Bayern win the Euro, <laughs> and another seventy million if United win the trophy. Thoughts, Terry. <laughs> Great deal, take it because we're winning a trophy. We're winning the Europa League next year, so make sure you take that, my friend. Uh, David, I know you've got a lot to say. Just want a quick update to the viewers on this deal in terms of the latest news that's coming through. So David Ornstein and and James Pierce have stated that Liverpool are understood to have agreed full personal terms. Nothing signed. Talks between the clubs still ongoing. That ranges right through to. It's interesting, really, because this Portuguese publication record who have said that it's done, it is happening, he will be a Liverpool player, it's all been agreed. Basically now contracts are being kind of reviewed by lawyers. They're the same outlet 10 days ago that said Liverpool will come in and hijack, and that got laughed at by Liverpool fans. So I'm not saying this, like 100% it's done, but the same people that broke the news that Liverpool were in for him first are now saying it's over the line. However, David, you're not that keen on Darwin. You don't think Darwin Nunes is that good a signing, is that right? Not that he's a bad player. It's, again, it's price, man. It's prices. This I'm a I'm a businessman, and personally, I wouldn't have spent. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, wait. Terry, don't, don't let me get away with that comment. What do you mean by a, you're an actual? Are you like the black Elon Musk or something? You're an actual business. Yeah, yeah. Mogul, so I make I make a, I make a lot of money. I make a lot of money. I oh wow! Money. Can yeah, you can you can you spend me twenty five mil? I'll, I'll 25 pay mil. Back. I'm not yeah. that rich. Oh, God, this, guy, this guy at uni in Cardiff, he's like Ghost Son, isn't it? I thought it Ghost Son's name, but that's what he's like. No one knows. No one at uni knows how much money I'm, I'm rolling up with. No one knows. But my point is, is that for, I wouldn't have gone above like 50, 55 mil. Like, an absolute, that's like an absolute like max for this player. And you're playing, what's it? Like 75, 80 mil odd? No, I, no, think that's, 68, 68 I, think, I think I think I think that's I, I think that's ridiculous. I think sixty eight mil. Well, if, if the add-ons go, massive, if the, if the add-ons if the add-ons happen because he obviously achieved what yeah, yeah. Jurgen Klopp improved, it will be the fourth most expensive signing in the history of English football. I think it's a I'm, massive. I'm okay with that. If he delivers what he's meant to deliver, I don't. I I I, no I, I think he's I think he's a good player. I think he has potential to get better. But is he an eighty five million pound player? No. Is he eighty five? Does he add eighty five million pounds of like? value to like not value but like quality to your squad no he doesn't he you doesn't. can't quantify that though because when we signed yeah, yeah, 75 yeah. mil everyone said that's too much money exactly. now no one talks about it. if he comes and slaps 30 goals next year we win the league no one yeah, will but talk he's about not getting many goals he's not, he's not yeah he's not goals. coming in and slapping in 30 goals because according know. according, according to all this. liverpool fans Klopp doesn't like starting his signing straight away he likes easing them in giving them little minutes here and uh, Lewis Diaz. Diaz. so how is he gonna Lewis, get Lewis Diaz, Lewis Diaz, Diaz how many outputs does Lewis Diaz have then hmm? 
How many outputs? Let's, let's yeah, keep that. About yeah, five still. Quiet. He's about five. Quiet. But no, no, no. Keep He's quiet. now a star in our team. Luis Diaz yeah, is now. Yeah. Luis Diaz is now a certified cool. star on our team. Cool. So there's no, problem. there's no better name. If you're good Luis enough, Diaz? you just come in. How much was Luis Diaz? Doesn't matter how much he was. It's not. It's not your money. It's not my money. I don't care how much players are. If they improve our team, if they improve our team, if they improve our team, I do not mind how much. Yeah, but if you can improve your squad, like. I, I, especially Liverpool fans as well. This I'm I, I'm talking especially about your club. You man love talking about net spend and bloody bloody blah. You can improve your squad with a thirty million pound striker rather than an eighty five million pound striker. Why would you not do that? All right, please tell me which striker. Name three strikers because, we can go and get no, no, because no, because no, because hey, 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 I'm not. I'm please, not the one. With, I'm not. Are we going to go? Are ma- we going to go? Ivan Tony? Not yeah? the one, please. No, I'm no, not no, the no, one no. with the magic scouting department that finds all these beautiful players. Who were li- who literally were in the Armenian second division two seasons ago, and Come apparently when no Klopp touched these no players, no they, they turned what into gold. That's what I've no been told for the past five years of my fucking life. Can I just ask one question? Okay, so, no. honest, honest assessment to Tom and it's like to, to you guys, Liverpool fans. Forget Klopp. Forget about talking about trust Klopp. Just based on you, your assessments on football and everything from what you've seen of Nunes, what do you believe? Do you believe that, oh, this guy can be a good signing, just irrespective yeah. of your trust in Klopp? A hundred percent. See, I'm, I'm not even saying this. From I know we haven't got exactly the largest playing, but the Liverpool fans seem to go back to them two games that we had against him in the Champions League. And we've only got YouTube come. I do think he's a very good player. And I think what we've got, what there is there as a player, is what we need because we... We haven't had a classic number nine since Torres. Swa- Torres oh, 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 yeah, or yeah, Suarez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, jo- like that's Jaws, it. Jaws. Yeah, Jaws. Respect Benteke. I'm not respecting nah, Christian please. Benteke. No, 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 no. He's a number nine. He was never a star. And he played on the left a lot as well. Like, no, I just I want the money thing's an interesting The money thing's sorry, mate. The money thing's an interesting one. There's a comment here that says um 65 plus 20, of which 60 is from Sal's. What's the issue? I don't think that's what the issue is at all. Like, people are always gonna tease Liverpool because of the kind of we don't spend type thing. I, I don't have an issue with Liverpool. I I said a few but, weeks ago, Liverpool should be breaking records this summer to do whatever they can to respond to Harlem going to City. They had to do it because there's no way you're catching City this year without improving the level of goals that you you can score, in my opinion. Interestingly, though, this whole like, Liverpool have to sell to buy it. Since the time of, summer of 2016, I went and did this little bit of research last night, and it's weird what narratives get spun for certain managers, not others. Now, this is not having a dig at Liverpool, but since January, sorry, since the summer of 2016, which is when Pep arrived, Liverpool have sold... £366 million pounds worth of players. And like almost half of that was one player, right? Is in Philip Coutinho. In that same time, Manchester City have sold £399 million pounds worth of players. So all clubs sell to buy. It's, it's, a, it's a nonsense narrative that no, like only like City just spend, 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 never sell. They've raised nearly, nearly sort of just over 40 million, just under 40 million pound more in that time for the sale of players. It's very normal and natural for that to happen. Like, I don't kind of get why... I get why people are going at Liverpool for spending it because some Liverpool fans pretend like you don't spend a lot of money or you only spend when you sell. But everybody kind of does that. Do you know what I mean? And what I do find weird is how some Liverpool fans are angry they're spending. It's like, I don't get it. Like, why? This is what we wanted. It's, this weird. Is what we wanted. Exactly. it's the same fans that were saying last season that, like, we've got, to, we've got to go big. We've got to do what City are doing. City has spent 100 million on Jack Willis while we only spent 37 million on Kanai. And then as soon as we do it, they start crying. There's no reason to cry. Like, for me, it's only it's only bad the price target if he flops because it's like mad. We spent 80 odd million and he's, he's only got like mm. Lukaku amount of goals. But if he bags, then I'm cool with it. I'm absolutely yeah, cool just, with it. Can I say, I think that's a, Liverpool fans got a bit triggered uh, last week when I said. Saka will make them worse, basically. Um, you, 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 you got two K on my yeah, head yesterday. I had two K on you. my head for looking like a Tottenham fan, apparently. For no <laughs> reason. But, but Liverpool fans, hold tight. I got you. Listen, when you lot were trying to buy Van Dijk in the summer of what twenty seventeen, I was one of the only people, and I'll I say this even as a Man United fan, even Liverpool fans, did not want to sell Coutinho that summer to buy Van Dijk. And I was like, listen, goals is not your problem. Sell Coutinho, you got Salah coming in. I didn't think Salah was going to do what he did, but I knew that he would. He did well when he was at Roma. You got Mane, you got Firmino. Sell Coutinho, get a centre back because your problems are at the back. In the end, you did it and you got the centre back. I'm saying this now. Forget the money. 
you need a striker. You've needed a striker. This season coming up, Darwin Nunes will score more league goals than Erling Haaland. I'm saying that. Clip it. It's gonna, I'm not saying he's better. I'm not saying he's gonna win more trophies. I'm not saying he's gonna have a better career. But next season in the Premier League, Darwin Nunes will score more league goals than Erling Haaland. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man, in the words of Jay Z. I'm here to get business. Darwin Nunes is a business. Obviously, providing that, you know, what Harlem doesn't get an injury that wipes out. No, I'm not providing anything. My statement is the statement. He is said the what statement. he said. If, that's it. There's no, I'm, 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 no I'm, caveat. There's no asterisk. All I'm saying, I'm very confident that Harlem. I le- we'll, he we'll might beat keep... we'll, de- we'll beat Nunes. Listen, listen. He might. Why you said Nunes a name like that? Like, but Nunes, 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 Nunes is a, is good. Harlem is. Yeah, but Nunes is. But Nunes is a finisher. I don't think it's a mad take. It's not a mad take. Nunes is a great finisher. Scored a lot of goals this year. Scored against some top teams in the champion Champions League, and he's not playing in a team as good as Dortmund. And and he's and he's doing it. In, in, I don't think Benfica is good as Dortmund, in my own opinion. Uh, interesting what you're saying is about the money. I think what it is for some football fans is football fans love to have their cake and eat it. They like to not spend a lot of money on individual players and then be able to celebrate that their managers coach and train better. We did it on a shoestring underdog story. They then like and it's up for some of them. It's like oh, we spend big. It's great because it shows we're a big club. But then it kind of takes the kind of romance away of, a, as you say, of a Disney story, of a great comeback, an underdog story. And I've said it for years. Even some of the Liverpool fans in the comment section are annoyed that I've mentioned City selling compared to Liverpool selling. I'm, I'm not suggesting City don't spend more. I'm simply stating that no one that's part of this top six that plays football in the Premier League with the money our clubs earned is an underdog, is a fairy tale story. We are all some of the richest football clubs on planet Earth. This underdog story is that Leicester was an underdog story. You know, Porto winning the Champions League was an underdog story. Liverpool spending the money that, 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 that they earn and winning the Premier League is a brilliant sporting achievement. Great coaching, brilliant team. It is not an underdog story. It is not something that Disney Plus or HBO are going to buy. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to sound harsh. It's like the fact that it was annoying me watching Liverpool fans go, oh, I don't think we've got the money for people. Of course you... You man signed a deal with Nike. You had a deal with Nike. That I, I've never seen so many Liverpool fans celebrate. Oh, we're the only team in the world that earns 20% of every piece of Nike. Liverpool branded Nike merchandise. We are going to be super rich from now. I've got no money. Of course you've got money. Your club just chose not to bloody spend it. Now you are. like, Be proud of it. Yeah, I wish no, my no, club was able to spend like that. Yeah, no, look, yeah that's, that's because, look, Liverpool, you're one of the most popular clubs in the world, like globally and so forth. You can't be that global, that popular, and start begging for peanuts and so forth on, on the road. So the, the, the money's there, man. So Honestly, yeah. all I hope, I, I, I've i always been, I'm not bothered by how much the club spends because it's not my money. That's how I've always worked. The one thing I do hope to come from this deal, though, is the first game of the Premier League season, we sit there and we chant the Reds have got no money. Because that, 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 that's all I want. I just want communist Liverpool to still believe that we don't have any money or anything. It's it's about time we effectively put, showed what we can do. This Champions League final loss, it, it hurts still, but it might be needed to actually show that, that in conjunction with the Jürgen Klopp contract to start putting our, start actually recognising the level we are, the type of level we've got to. You, you spot we on have because... to buy these type of players if you want to compete. You do because you can do it. Is, is that you can do what you did before and predominantly buy? I get thirty million pound striker that might become as good as Darwin and then might go on to the next level. But then that's that's winning one league title in seven years. Liverpool Football Club want to be winning. They want to be dominating like Pep's just done. You have to spend money to do it. There's no point doing all these big commercial deals. There's no point expanding the stadium size, which generates more income. There's no point doing all these things if you're not going to spend it on players. Because Liverpool's only job is to win the trophies. That's the only commodity you deal in. So I think any Liverpool fan moaning about it or trying to play it down or, oh, actually, we're paying it in instalments and, you know, we're paying it. We did it through Littlewoods, mate. It's only costing £2.60 a week. Why, why belittle your club? You are big Liverpool, rich Liverpool. Be proud of what you've built. It's organic money as well. Like, celebrate it, embrace it. It's very weird to me. Uh, Joshua here says, I like David, but you can't talk about the price tag when you when you told Chelsea last year to break the bank for Haaland. Even that guy has been injury prone. You get called out, David. No, so first of all, Haaland's not injury prone. This has actually like been his first season where 
he's had what? a couple of injuries. He's what? this. He's not that. He's really not. Lies. That no, not, stop lying. Lies. It's not lies. It's not lies. He's, 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 he's been picking up injuries. He's, he's been picking been, up injuries. So lies. It's, it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. It's Second not that point, bad. My point. My point about Haaland was that I believe Haaland is is what is going to be one of the top two players in the world. And what? When, well, behind yeah, Darwin I, Nunes, behind behind the Kylian Mbappe, and when <laughs> and when Lukaku was, and when we were being told we were going to spend 100 million on Lukaku, I was like, why would we go and spend 100 million on Lukaku when I can literally go and spend 120 million and get Haaland? Once I found out that Haaland was going to be like 150, 160 a week, and he wanted like 500, 600k a week wages, I was like, that's not worth it. Because even though he's very talented, he's not that talented. So Thank I had li- I had limits, but I was like, if we're going to spend this much on one person. I'd rather spend this extra bit on the next person. David, just to let you know, 13 injuries in two it's years, fair. four times it's been knee problems. He missed 180 days in the last two seasons. It's not that bad. And on top of that, David, he's only he, yeah, he hasn't completed 30 league games in a season to date. So it, that's not down to form. It's, it can't be. Because he scores goals. No, no, I'm, not I'm, saying, I'm not saying it's a good deal for C. Don't get it twisted. I, but you can't I, re- I, re- I don't think the injury problems are like, no, no, wait, wait, but but Nick's like, when is he picking up those injuries? Though, I'd be interested. Or international G, but but his thinking though, Nick's look, know. City have already wasted 100 mil on free cash already, so those guys they know how to pretty much waste money. So if this is a waste, it's like it's what it is, like they're, they're, <laughs> oil, oil money, man. The, the money is endless, cheats. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't get this in Kunku obsession. What, why, how are we going to fit Nunes and Nkunku? They are two different players. There is a mm. clear thing here that. Our fans need to understand we're going after Darwin Nunes, who is a completely different player to Nkunku. So the people sitting there going, No, I want Nkunku instead. Why? Because we obviously don't need Nkunku, otherwise, we'd have bought, we'd have bought an Nkunku, we'd have bought an Nkunku type player. Kunku's, no, we're Kunku's buying a Nunes, got... we're buying a he's, tall he's quality, he's finisher. quality though. And Kuku's not even a, tall, he's not even a striker, though. That's the funny thing. Mm-hmm. He's actually not yeah, a striker. Yeah, he, he plays wide. He plays wide. He plays what wide. He actually, he's he's a, he's actually, his actual main thing is he's like he's a midfield. And then, yeah, and yeah. What, but what, he's been doing false night. He, he's been doing false night. He'd be the Firmino yeah. replacement. He'd be the Firmino replacement if Firmino was still like our main guy up top. But he isn't. We're moving past that phase. What we need is Nunes, another right side of the attacker, so Mo Salah does not have to play every single minute of every single game of every single season for the rest of time. And the midfielder. And Kunku, yeah. for his price and for the role that we need, does not fit that. So I don't get this obsession with him. He'd be Speak- nice three years ago. That's about it. Speaking of Nkunku, because me personally, I would prefer Nkunku at Man United and Darwin Nunes. However, I'm not a Man United manager. And Ten Hag wants Nunes. Because if you look at, as, as you know, Silky, the football that he likes to play, he always has a, like a, a kind of a target man. He had, a, was it Dolberg? He had Haller. Yeah. And now he wants uh, Darwin Nunes. Then, yeah, we've got Ronaldo. Ronaldo's 37 years old. Like, that's not going to last forever. So I'm slightly concerned about where do we go in the striker market? Because who are, who else out there is of the profile of Darwin Nunes? Not a striker. Like ghost. Man wants to leave Burnley. Oh, I mean, please, like no. Ghost. I saw a million about that yesterday. I was oh, like, we are, I got two goals we, in 20 we, games. We are he in is, the mud. He, if is we six are foot, he is six foot six. He's 29 years old and he ain't good enough for Man United. I don't know what, what do you want him to do. He's not good enough. Get, I don't freaking, care. get Yao Ming at striker. I reckon he could be smart up there. I'm a bit concerned about I mean, the speaking of sp- striker moves, though, one of the other big stories kind of circulating today, gents, is that Chelsea are now in and looking, seriously looking at Gabriel Jesus. What's really intriguing about this story kind of over the last 24 hours coming out, we had Ben Jacob on the show yesterday who said Arsenal was still leading the race. Arsenal was still there. But Arsenal have managed to convince... City to drop the asking price from near on 50 million down to the low 40s. The problem with that is it's now attracted other suitors, Real Madrid being one, Chelsea being another. Gabriel Jesus in, Lukaku out. What are you saying, have hope? <sighs> you see, here's the thing. I mean, I think that the whole Lukaku love affair needs to, to be ended, though. Although, if we get the us, I don't know, but yeah, look, Jesus. Here's the thing. What's the point in getting Jesus if we have um, bricks in midfield who, who don't know how to create? So Jesus, you can't get Jesus as your main striker. I expect to give you 20 to 25 goals. I'm sure David will agree that 
Jesus only works if the support system around him works. Jesus looks good in Brazil because he's got Neymar, he's got Coutinho, he's got all these guys around him. But if you're not putting Jesus in there with Mason Mount, who creates one chance every 3,000 years and so forth, where 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 are his goals going to come from? So Jesus only makes sense if the team makes sense. So with how Chelsea are currently constructed and so forth, there's no point in getting a Jesus. There's, there's no point. You know, although, also, although before I go to David, although what I'll say though is Jesus may make sense because he is a better version of what that clown Timo Werner is because he's mobile, he's direct, he can run, he can get onto through balls. Werner actually gets in goal scoring opportunities because he's fast and quick. It's just that he's brain dead. So he's, he doesn't know what, what to do in those like um, key areas, man. But it has to be Jesus plus other players as well that, that's the thing because jesus he's not a striker like he's he, the thing is he's got he's good movement. Season, he's just not season. like he doesn't play striker for city very often he plays striker for brazil of, though no he used to play striker for brazil when they won the Copa america he was playing right wing and he's been listen 2018 mm. world cup he is the reason why my team did not get to that <laughs> final because every the, the brazil only played well when he came off and Firmino came on, or he went wide and Firmino came on. But did you see he him put the legs through the ball through the company's legs, though? He put the ball through company's legs. That was a penalty. Uh, that was a penalty, man. Listen, put him on the right. That's the thing. So I think he can replace Werner or do that role. If, if, if you play the same formation and you have those two, whatever, you have tens behind the striker, cool. He can do that drift wide, whatever. But if you're going to have your main number nine, Jesus, yeah, you might finish by an answer. God, God forbid that Brad ends up as my top striker. I honestly, <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's just a small he's Lukaku. Most, he's just a small he's the, Lukaku. Like, no, Tom, stop it. Tom, stop it. No, he's the most nah, underperforming striker in the Premier League. Honestly, this guy should like literally have like 20 goals in three Premier League seasons. He underperformed XG by eight goals in one season. Do you know how tough that is? <laughs> that, that, do you actually understand how difficult that is? Timo Werner's, he has a worse finishing season than Timo Werner's worst finishing season in the Premier League. That's how Mate. that's not as, as my main striker. No, <laughs> can I if we if we get rid of like who's on if we get rid of a Ziek, right? And then we brought in a, a, a Jesus, I could sort of see that because when he goes on the wing, he's a bit more effective, he can create a little bit and so on and so forth. But if he ends up being my main striker, we're finishing for third or fourth again. Me, I, I don't get I don't get why. He works for Arsenal because Arsenal don't have anyone who scores. They don't have a designated main goal scorer. Chelsea's issue is their striker doesn't score goals. So you're looking at a striker who, if you take away Watford at home this season, got four goals in 27 Premier League appearances. Four. He, he, he's passed. He's got double figures twice in, I think it's like six seasons. There was, one, there was one season where he scored 14 goals and everyone was like, oh, he's really good. <laughs> he should have scored 22 that year. Oh mate, it's just it is shocking. That's like right. Gabriel Jesus, yeah. he 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 is a fantastic backup for a top six team or a Leicester striker. That is his level. He's not. He doesn't have what the top teams need in a striker. He doesn't have that killer instinct. If if a half chance fell to Gabriel Jesus, I'd back him putting it out for a throw more than I'd back him putting it in the nest. Like you know, that, you know what I mean? with him. If, if if he's not good enough for City to win the league, mm -hmm. he ain't good enough for Chelsea to catch City. Like let's be, let's get it right. City yeah, are yeah, getting yeah. rid of him and buying Harlan. Perfectly put. Chelsea it's like it's it's, it's a bad move. Yeah. Catch Harlan. Like you can't do that. You have it's to. It's a bad move. Yeah, okay, but, but, but let me ask. Okay, get, him, no, get him. Get him. Get him. As you said, HL, HH, get someone else. And is, he, is, is, he, is he a good enough signing though? As well, for like I mean, Chelsea's links to him have been few, few days. They've been here. Zer Kinsella has kind of confirmed the links. The story's picking up pace. And it may be a case of if they get rid of it, they might be bringing in him, at, might be bringing him in alongside someone else. Is he even good enough for Arsenal in that regard? Because Arsenal obviously trying to get back into the top four. They're trying to win trophies. Will he work there? Or is it still a case of he's not going to be good enough for Arsenal City you know, at all? Or is that different because Arsenal are no. in a different position to Chelsea? Terry, I, would, I really do feel that... Arsenal is a really good move for him. Because, again, this is what I said about players. Especially in a, in a World Cup year as well. Go to a team that suits your profile of player. I think Chelsea are still going to stick with this whole back three. Pragmatic thing. So if you just put Jesus in this situation, I'm not sure it suits him. You look at how Arsenal play. It's fast. It's direct. They keep the moving the ball forward. And they want to just hit, hit, hit the space so it's quicker. That suits Jesus. 
how City played did not suit Jesus. How Chelsea played will not suit Jesus, especially with his body in Martinelli there as well. I think that setup and so forth suits Jesus well. The issue with us is that Atet is, is trash. You know, that, that's the thing. You're not doing anything without that. That guy's he's an he's an ethical merchant. So it is what it is. But you put Jesus in that situation, it works for Arsenal. It works for Arsenal because Ar Arsenal have this weird obsession with this striker that doesn't score goals. They've done it with Lacazette. That they're gonna try and carry yeah, it on with on, Jesus because do they Jesus. they want Martinelli on the left and Saka on the right to be the main goal scorers. Tom Lacazette, really? You're comparing Jesus to Lacazette, really? Yeah. Tom, don't do that. He, What's he done differently to Lacazette? Like, Lacazette like is horrible, bro. And and is Jesus much better? I would say I'll tell you Jesus over Lacazette. Like Come on, so what are we no, saying, you, you, man? You take him, you take him, but is he actually like that, much, that better? much better? No. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I think in <laughs> in the right team, in the Lacazette, right team and system, Lacazette Jesus is much better. better. Like Mate, how, you can't Eddie get more right team than Manchester City. They put chances on plate for any single Tom, player. Tom, come on. Football is more complex than that. So for the way in which they play and operate is totally different from how, let's say, Arsenal or Liverpool play. That system and so forth did not suit the kind of guy that Jesus was. Jesus, I think, would work better at Arsenal. I'm, I'm not saying Jesus is like a 30-goal scorer or so, or, so, or so forth. But I'm just saying that the way Arsenal play will suit Jesus more. And you are smoking crack cocaine. And you're sticking Skonta Riga if you're comparing lack of threat to Jesus. Come on, don't do that, man. I'll, I'll happily compare them. I, I, I think Jesus City is City talks, you're, you're, a, you're a clown. Go back to your mom's basement. <laughs> so. I'll, I'll happily compare Lacazette to Jesus because I don't see much difference. I think Jesus is better, and I think he will be better. But if you put Jesus in that Arsenal team, he will do the exact same things Lacazette done, just slightly better, which is not what Arsenal need. Well, you know, Arsenal you know needs something different. Jesus is for me is a far better player than Lacazette. I don't think either of them are good enough as a striker, the number nine, the focal point. But what for what Arsenal want next season, i.e., to finish fourth, to get into the Champions League, maybe to win the Europa League. Jesus is better as a better fit than Lacazette because as as unclinical, that's the right word, as both of them are, he's a better goal scorer. His movement's better. Yeah. Um, his his instinct is better. His finishing is is at least a lot to be desired. But I think he's a he'll be a good signer. He'll be a very good signer for Arsenal. He could be who else could also sign? That's a different. Chelsea can sign. Chelsea can sign an Nkunku. Chelsea can sign a Darwin Nunes. Liverpool, um, Arsenal can't sign though, so they have to go for a. a, a yeah, a, I, 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 I agree. I think I think he'll score goals at Arsenal. I, I think he would. I think he'll. I don't even think there's, there's as much pressure at Arsenal anymore as, as there is Chelsea, as there is Man City, as there is Liverpool. I think the standards have dropped slightly. Like they are, they'd be more than happy next year. I think most Arsenal fans next season with the club would be more than happy if they played slightly better football, scored more goals, got more points, pushed half of that top four, had a good cup run. They may say we want more than that, but by the looks of it, I think most Arsenal fans would kind of settle for that. And I think that's Gabriel Jesus' like level. And I think he'll be a good signing for them. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, City system doesn't allow for a single goal scorer. So, so then I, I get, I get that point. But then, why is Riyad Mahrez, Raheem Sterling, and Phil Foden, who all played in his position last season, outscored them? They, no, they've all that. played just, in the same just, positions. Why they've why all outscored missing them. Chances? Why is he just missing chances? No, I, I, I hear that. Uh, C C uh, uh, Chelsea fan here says, "I hope I'm wrong, but Chelsea probably won't get a DM. That's a disgrace, Marina." What are you doing? We will struggle without our, um one without one. Our midfield is so imbalanced. Stop, stop, Terry, stop, no, 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 no. Stop. Terry, do you know what is disgusting? Terry, do you know what is disgusting? And I hope this isn't true, but David, I think this might, might be true. Do you know this clown of a club could have gotten Chomeni for like 40 million, but instead they opted for Saul, who literally siphoned off money and did nothing. And now yeah, it's not going to go about yeah. Athletic. But there are reasons for that. David, what are the reasons? The reasons me. I don't agree with the reasons, but I can see the lo the logic in what Please, they were thinking. What are the reasons? What's what's the logic? What's the logic? I need what's to the explain. So, <laughs> I need to hear this. Am I? Am I? T I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but basically, from 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 sort from alleged sources, allegedly, what occurred is that when Chelsea wanted to sign Shuamani, is that he wanted to come in and be guaranteed first team football after just winning the Champions League having had Jorginho play at, be one of the best midfielders in the world, according to a lot of journalists. Kante, who had like one of the best performances in the Champions League run in a while, 
And Kovacic, who I still think is one of the best midfielders in the Premier League, is very underappreciated. It was hard to guarantee to a many first team football because, you know, all those three players were performing probably at their best that they had in a very long time. So when we offered the contract to Chiumeni, it was like, mm, you're probably going to come in, sit on the bench, and then we'll see whether you can get game time. He didn't want that, and we couldn't guarantee that football. Obviously, the season then happened. Jorginho, you know, came off the high and, like, found his level. Kante got very injury-prone. But the point is, is that you can't guarantee that was going to happen. Again, I personally would have done it because, you know, 40 mil, young player, a lot of potential. That's just a good person to have whether he's unhappy or he's not, like when he gets on the field, it'll probably contribute something. But I can see the reasoning as to why instead of going for that, they went, you know what, let's just wait an extra year, stick with this person who we know can be an option off the bench and then go with that. But, 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 but do you know why that's, do you know why I'm angry with that? It's because I was one of those few that said that. First of all, I believe that Jorginho needs to give back that UEFA award. He needs to give that back because that's, that's his theft. Because I was really do that said that you idiots this guy wasn't the reason chelsea won the ucl he wasn't the reason he was a passenger he was a passenger he just managed just to grab onto an, an amazing train so for things that screw that clown for dino chomeni yeah you're gonna play in, in, instead of, of this clown 100 so the fact that you said oh Jorginho, he's one of the best we're gonna keep him over a young player with, with his potential just shows it just my, my, my no, again, again, it's, 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 poor, it's poor planning but it's not marina's job it's the scouts my my personal beef is not with Marino. My personal well, beef is with the then your personal beef best. You, what what did Saul do? You you would have been better oh. off going into the season underprepared without Saul. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. What did he do apart no, from fully, No, fully, fully. <laughs> like I, he was one. He's again one of the worst signings we've had in a long time. Like, I still need to apologize like, for being like, so on his hype train last Danny, summer. Danny, I, I wanted Danny him. Over I wanted. Him, I wanted him. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted him. Olu here, guys, says that. Do Chelsea actually need a traditional number nine under Tuchel ball? I feel Jesus could fit well, but we need more quality attackers around him. Um, I think that's what we kind of alluded to uh, in, in that conversation. Chelsea As... just needs someone who guarantees goals. You just need someone who, it, when it's tight, when, you, when you're when you going to get one chance and you can feed it to anyone, you feed it to that player. Right now, if, if even if it fell to have it, who I think your best finisher is, I'm not confident on it going in. Our top goal scorer can't have 13 goals in the Prem. That's just... 13? Yeah. Yes, yes. Your man was too distracted texting his ex, bruv. That's all that happened there. Um, <laughs> that is wild. Uh, they, could have, they could have bought him and loaned him to Monaco. Listen, though, this, listen, I know it's always annoying when it happens, but the Man United, if I, I remember reading, if we'd have bid half a million pound more, we'd have got Ronaldinho. But then would have missed out a year later on Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, some people would say Ronaldinho would have been better, but you never quite know. And this is what you might find with Chelsea. You miss out on too many, but you might bring somebody else through or buy someone else in a year. And you might look back in three or four years' time and go, I'm so glad we didn't get him. I'm not saying you will, but that's happened in football as well. Hindsight's lucrative. Uh, Dexter here says, give me strength. Arena is not a scout. She gets told, get me player X and Y, and she negotiates with the club agents to get the best Deal is what Dexter says. Then why did she win that Ballon d'Or award? What's that Ballon d'Or award for? No, she just collects the award. No, that, that, well, that award, if, if you win best director of football, that's for being good at negotiating and doing your job, right? Not for being the best scout. Directors of football. The irony in it is Man United had a, 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 someone pretending to be a director of football that also thought he knew better than the scouts, and that was Ed Woodward. Like, that's that's doing it the wrong way. The gal here says top four or... Europa Champions League win minimum, Terry. I get that, but I almost guarantee you, if we get to like May, or maybe earlier, April, and Arsenal go out of the Europa League, out of the Cups, fifth in the league, six, seven points behind the top, I guarantee you there'll be excuses made by the masses as to why that's okay. That's not you, yep. Egal. I guarantee, I'm talking Arsenal in generality here. I think that will happen. Uh, Strip Bear says, if I'm personally, I had a choice, Mama Flossie, mod she has the best temperament and attitude boss on what? this my soul i don't know what you mama what? flossy is a great member of the football terry so uh, big up to yourself mama flossy uh arsenal need to look at someone like ollie watkins tony <laughs> joe who's jonas jonas wind from jonas like, wins Col 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 i think he was the replacements yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe. There's also a big report that's emerged uh, today as well about Manchester United in, a, in an attacking front, and it's that Man United are still trying to sign Ajax's Anthony. According to reports, his representatives have travelled to meet with Manchester United over negotiations, and a transfer fee of around sixty million euros is being discussed. Is Neeks? Is that the kind of attacker that Man United need? And Anthony, um, I, I think he can play on the right, isn't it? He's a right winger. Yeah, yeah. Um, Left that's definitely, it's definitely what we need. I mean, we needed it when we got Sancho. I thought Sancho was that one to play on the right. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to play on the left as well. I mean, he can, Sancho can play on the right. Um, and if Rashford is firing, then you put Sancho on the right. The, the issue was Rashford wasn't firing. Marshall wasn't firing. Of course, we loaned him. I mean, nobody was, were they? But then um, we, we loaned out Marshall. So it was like, well, Sancho, you like the left, you can go on the left. But Anthony, I'll take that. Um, that's that's why I'm saying I wanted someone like Nkunku in terms of the fluidity of the forward line. He can play through the middle. He can play out wide. Anthony's probably more winger than play through the middle, but it allows that fluidity when Ronaldo's not there. When Ronaldo's obviously playing, he's going to be the focal point. Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't know enough about him to sort of, to, I've, I've read good things. I've seen some good footage, compilations, etc. But I kind of, you, you refrain from that. I still actually think when I've watched Sancho for a year in England, I really think he should be playing more centrally. He doesn't actually have the the, the, the pace out wide, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I like him technically he can number 10. Point. He could complete yeah. number 10. Maybe there's that opportunity well, there. Well, it, it, it depends because I think it's more the, our style, or the way we've been playing rather than because Grealish hasn't got extra ex, express pace. Um, Santos probably faster than him. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah. the way that City play, they play at the edge of your box. So you don't need pace to run in behind. You just need that burst of. No, 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 no. I think he can, beat, he can beat a man as well. Yeah. He's quick, he's quick, he's quick I, I, mentally. And so pass like, round. You pass round yeah. people. Yeah, as well. yeah, no, 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 because I think, look, see, you're gonna, it's going to be a slower game. Not, but it's going to be a slower game compared to Ralph Ragnick. So I think that Ten Hag, maybe he's... Because I think when you look at just how I explain and so forth, a lot of passing and so forth, technical, keep, keep the ball and everything, he may just move Sancho. Not even necessarily in the center, but to make it a lot more fluid rather than guys just sticking to their positions rigidly, you know. So I think that Sancho could actually walk on the 10. Because look, I believe in him. Like, I don't know what went wrong. I don't know whether it's yeah. United. Because I'm like, wait, this is a guy who was one of my favorite players for Dortmund. I don't know what happened when he moved to United because there's still, there's, there's a good player there. Yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, look, the, the whole year at Manchester United, everything that went on, I'm not surprised players struggled. Interestingly, though, like Spurs today or in the last few days have inquired about Marcus Rashford. And the story coming out of Manchester is Eric Ten Hag's excited to work with him, thinks he can get him back to his very, very best. Do you feel as though something that's kind of been overlooked about Man United's attack is if players like Rashford can be reborn, Sancho can reborn to get back to their very, their very best levels under Ten Hag, there's almost an element of them feeling like, and that's a cliche, but feeling like new signings because they were so bad last year. You almost mm. got to a point where you wrote them off, like they weren't even part of the squad for periods. Is that something that a lot, I saw a lot of United fans angry on socials yesterday when there was a report that says Ten Hag's been told he's got to improve the players that are staying? Almost like that's a negative thing to task your manager with doing. Surely when you've had a team that's had its worst season in Premier League history, part of the new manager's job is to get better out of what you've got as well. The, the reality is, like, when you look at people say, oh, Man United weren't the second best team in the league, Liverpool, Liverpool had their, their injuries. And that's fair enough. I don't disagree with that. Liverpool have proved this the season before, this season, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we got 74 points that season we finished second. 74 points gets you into the top four. We had 58 last year. Like, these players are not 58 points bad. I don't care what you say. These players, ability-wise, are not 58 points bad. Therefore, the manager has to get more out of them. That doesn't mean, well, we don't sign anyone. Uh, you know, look, look, what's his name? Um, Klopp is signing Darwin Nunes. And he's praised for how much he gets, you know, improves players. So, yeah, Ranjit said we need 10 new players. We're not going to get 10 new players in the summer. I'm hoping we can get five. But those five, plus his ability as a coach and um, just the general mood, I think, lifted more than anything. Because it was the same coaches that got us 66 and 74 points mm -hmm. that we ended up, well, kind of dropping out. So I think the mood being lifted around Old Trafford and just the confidence of some of those players, I I think yeah we can expect a, a big improvement from a lot of individuals. Yeah, I, I think I think you're on something. I think Anthony coming in, he had a brilliant season with Ajax, and he was he's been looking brilliant 
under Ten Hag, I think he's what you need on that right because even yeah. with Sancho coming in last season to play on the right and then extenuating circumstances leading to him on the left, I don't think he's the right winger that you need it in a way. I think Sancho on the left gives you something else in terms of his cutting in and his playmaking ability. So Anthony gives you much needed pace out wide and creativity. Rashford's a weird one. I don't know why Rashford was played on the right last year. I don't know why Rashford was so bad last year. I don't know if it's his injury, like coming back from that and not having enough rehab or whatever, or if it was still hangover from the Oros. But if Ra- I don't think Rashford at United is going to work out anymore. I just think there's too much pressure on his shoulders. He came, he broke in so early, and since he's been there, even while Ronaldo's been here and he's had Pogba here and Fernandez, everyone's went, "Come on, Marcus, we need you to step up now. This is it now." The pressure's been on him so intense for six years. I think he needs to get out of there to refine himself, re- refine how he plays football. Because last year it was a man who just looked lost on a football pitch. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know where he was. It was it was actually quite sad because when Marcus Rashford's on it, he's such an exciting player to watch. But I, I do think his time at United is up. And if you can get good money for him and Ten Hag can reinvest into a different type of winger, go for it. Tom, I told you, Rashford was never that good. And I told Terry this years, years ago during our very humble beginnings and so forth. I don't know if Terry tried to punch me in the face and everything when I said this because he loves Rashford. And I tried to explain to, to Terence that Rashford, he, I, he's not as good as you think he is. And I think that for United, it's very much a sentimental thing of he's come through the academy and so forth. And they're looking at him through these kind of rose-tinted glasses because they almost just want him to be this amazing player because he came from the academy. If Rashford did not come from United's academy, United fans wouldn't have this kind of romanticized view up about him. Rashford yeah, simply ain't it. He simply ain't it. And he simply isn't this amazing, superb talent that United fans think he is. The only people that truly rate Rashford like this are United fans. Any, anybody outside of United just with Rashford, you know, he's good. Like, he's, he has ability and so forth. He's not that good. He isn't, like, generational. He isn't this superb, amazing talent. So, I just think for Rashford, like, yeah, bro, cut your losses, bro. It ain't happening with, with, with the dude. How about you making him sound like lost his cheek, bro? Yeah, I mean, look, I think it's, I think it's, I think the generational thing, cheek fair is enough. Better. But at the same time, you know, we've seen players like Sebastian Allaire. You've seen players like Tadic, Ziyech, who aren't generational talents, who aren't the most supreme football players in the world, turn into high-level creators or goal scorers in proper systems. In, 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 in teams that are coached properly. I kind of look at Marcus Rashford and I think where someone like him really started to struggle is that there was a system that Man United played and there was coaching, but it wasn't of the level of someone like a Ten Hag. It wasn't of the level of a Tuchel, the level of a Pep or a, or a Jurgen Klopp. And I think over a period of time, that starts to show it's what's going to be the difference next year with in the top six with five elite level managers versus one, you know, I mean, it rudely to Mikel Arteta, Let's just leave Ten Hag out of it for a minute. I, you know, I think he's there. They can't make the top four next year, Arsenal, in my opinion, just because of the managers of the four clubs they've got. Those managers are so good. Their systems are so good. They're going to generate performances and consistency from players that lesser managers can't do. And if managers weren't that important, then why do we big them up? Why do we why do we rave about them so much? Like, managers are very important. So I think Rashford has the ability to be a performer for Man United, a match winner for Man United. He was doing it under managers that were struggling when we were saying there was no system, when we were saying there was no tactics, when we were saying there was no training. The same very fans who will kick off and go, Pogba and Martial and Donny van der Beek have been ruined by this club for a lack of training and a lack of structure. Cool, I'll agree with you. Rash is not as technically gifted as him. Surely the less technically gifted football players will be damaged more by a badly run club than the more gifted players. I think it's premature to write Marcus Rashford off, even if he just goes back to being what a lot of people called him, just a, a goal scorer. If he mm-hmm. gets back to scoring 20, 20 plus goals a season. He's an asset and a valuable asset for Manchester yeah, United. Yeah, 
You know, you know, I think Rashford oh, needs though. I, I, I think he misses because he's coming. Uh, he came in under Louis Van Gaal, oh, oh. plays a striker. Yeah, right, yeah. Then he was under Mourinho, and he couldn't find his position there. He thought he was a left winger. Mourinho was playing him here, there, and everywhere. Then under Solskjaer, Solskjaer started playing him on the right at times, then on the left, and up in the middle when there was injury problems. And then under Rangnick, he couldn't really get into the team. But when he was, he was on the right, which he doesn't really like. He just needs a bit of consistency. He just needs a man just to sit him down and go. I'm playing you here. This is your job. I'm not going to try and change that. I'm not going to take you out of your position or try and make you something you're not. I think he needs to realise that he's a left winger, first and foremost. And then he needs to start... He needs a manager that trusts him to just exclusively play off the left wing because I think Mourinho was doing punditry for one of the games he was at Sky Sports for, and he said, Marcus Rashford, he, he's, Marcus Rashford is a brilliant left winger but he doesn't want to play left wing. It's like what we've got with Oxley chamberlain at the minute. Oxley chamberlains a great right side of the attacker, but he, he wants to play somewhere else. When, they, when he realises that his strengths and his abilities are on the left wing, he'll refine himself. And that's why I think he needs to go, because I just don't... I think with San, I think Sancho's better on the left, and I think Sancho's better than him. Mm-hmm. So And Rashford needs to play consistently on the left to find himself. Even if it's just a loan, like you've done with Jesse Lingard to West Ham, so he can find himself again. That's what needs to happen to Rashford. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, listen, I think there's I mean, everyone's got a different view on him, and a lot of people have written him off and he's done and he's finished. And, and maybe maybe he is. But you know, if he comes back to scoring and back to form for two years, three years, four years, and then has another bad patch, people will just go, I told you, Terry, four years ago, I told you he was bad. It was one of those things that Rashford, Rashford is never going to shake this tag. Harry Kane still gets called overrated and average. But Wayne Rooney still gets called overrated by people after what he's done and what he's won. So Rashford's never shaking that tag, but I still think he can be uh, an asset for Manchester United. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Some super chats here says that's us a BS Terry. United won't make top four. I don't know if you were listening sleep. Maybe you were asleep. But I said, exclude <laughs> Ten Hag and Man United. Arsenal still won't make top four because the remaining managers are better than Arteta. So Conte, Tuchel, Klopp, Pep. I didn't make. I, I literally took Man United out of the equation, uh, my friend. So sorry that you weren't listening. Uh, Terry, the African shamans do their magic with literal other human body parts. They do. They sorry. They do this. They tried to hex. United will never break free from their hex. It was a witch thing. That's, that's Why have we got an African hex? That's, that's, that's on Pep. That's on Pep. Not to do yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. The yeah, sorry, no, hex still lives. Ah, do you know what it yeah, is? Yeah. The they tried to, no, 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 no. They tried to do it to Pep, but they didn't realize there were two clubs in Manchester, so they did it on Man United. That's what it was. <laughs> they only think there's one. They, they don't even know City exists. No, man, that, that kills me every year when someone just pulls up that screenshot of that new story. It kills me every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate. It does, it does. It, it it is funny. I always love um Rubinho's first interview where he basically was like, I didn't know there were two teams in Manchester. That's so funny. Not anymore, because it didn't very, very well, but it used to be funny anyway. But uh, there we go. But Anthony to Man United. Do you guys feel like Man United are gonna struggle? Because Darwin Nunes was a deal that was very close, is in the player was very happy, the deal was there to be done, United are negotiating, but Liverpool have come in and the head's been turned. Now that me, I keep thinking of that meme. You know, the guys walking down the street with his girlfriend, and another girl walking oh, past. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. That's that's what's happening. Do you guys think that's going to happen to Man United again this window? Do you think maybe with De Jong or another player, we could be very close, and then a bit another big boy in a better position comes in and says, "We'll have some of that." You see, here's the thing about De Jong, and this may actually make you and Nick's happy. So I don't know how how true this is with this whole trio thing. So Barca have no money. Mm. And the only way that they can get money is by selling players. And um, um, Jorge Mendes, oh, sorry, George M- Mendes, his um, one of his clients is Bernardo Silva, and apparently they discussed Bernardo Silva with Barcelona. So the idea is, Barca need to get De Jong off their books. I think De Jong is top five highest earners at Barca. So they need to get De Jong off their books in order to get for enough money to get Lewandowski and to get Bernardo Silva. So I think it will be in Barca's best interest to give De Jong to United, get him off their books, and also for them to get Bernardo Silva. And I just believe that for United, you have to go for De Jong. In midfield, that is the nucleus and the heartbeat of every team. And I think for United, for so long, the, the midfield just has been poverty because Pogba is having to work with Fred Flintstone 
and McSauce. There's not much that he, he, he can do with those two to do. So I do feel that I, I see... Because there's no one else coming in for De, De Young. Because unless Liverpool come on swooping out of nowhere and everything, United are the only gig in town. But then we've seen this happen before. United will procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. I'm like, oh, United will... Okay, cool. Wait, yeah, get out of the way. Yeah, we have the money. That's, right, the, that's the thing with United. That's the thing with United, though. They've got two problems. First one is that they always go for the bait signings. Like, I can't remember the last time United signed a player and you've been like, oh, that's a bit left field or haven't really heard of him before. Mm. They'll go for FIFA stats, right. who, who's yeah. in at the moment, who, who's being tweeted about. Yeah. And then the second thing is they don't just get their business done. They'll want to be proud about going for XYZ. They'll go and parade that they're in for. <laughs> do, do, let's use Dion, Dion as an example. Just pay the money and go and get him. Why are they? Why is it all? Why is it all common knowledge now? With other teams, you only hear about it when it's done. It's a one. It's a one horse race. They want to go in for him. But United like to go the long way around all the time. Negotiate over like like Terry was saying. Negotiate over five hundred grand. Miss out on Ronaldinho. Like just if you if you know that a club setting a price for a player, just pay it. Pay it and go and get the player. And then keep it moving. Go and get the next one. But no, United like to do this. Oh look, guys, we're going in for the young. We're going in for Nunes. Then before you know it, you turn your head, then they're, they're posing with other team shirts. It's just like, yeah, once yeah. United get out of this weird fixation of we Man United, we've got to do things this way, you're not going to prosper. But I think you like to think with Ten Hag, he might be able to make a bit of a change in the mentality because he looks like he's not one to mess about. But again, you're seeing now that the youngest, like, is it still on? Is it not on? you got to just get it done. Because like Have Hope was saying, he's a guy who can be like, the focal point in your midfield for the next five, six years. That you, you, for United to progress, they've got to get a player like him this summer. You know, you know oh no, that corner I'm... story kills me. Sorry, that corner story kills me. He rocked up to the manager's office one day and went, "I want to go back up. I want to go back to my parent club." He went, "Lad, we bought you last summer," and he just walked <laughs> wow. back. Out. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Man went like in Burnley, bro. Man went like in Burnley. And then his brother was caught in the crowd later as well. It's just that. It's yeah, just yeah. <laughs> Can, can I just La, say, honestly, I think... they, they missed a the trick not getting Burnley as that Amazon Prime show last summer. Uh, Everything that. inside that club killed me last season. Oh, my can, God. Can, can I just say, on, on the whole Man United doing business, and listen, people are going to say, oh, you're backing up for, you know, for Glazer. It's not about that. And I think in if we're looking over the last X amount of years, since you know since Fergie, let's say the last 10 years, yes, I 100% agree. We procrastinate, we drag it out, we try and make... The transfer news, the centerpiece, rather than the actual business and getting it done on the football side. But I have to give credit where credit's due because since we changed the structure of the side, and obviously Ed Woodward of the of the squad, sorry, the squad, the club. Obviously Ed Woodward was still in his his position, but when John Murta came in as the football director and um, Darren Fletcher as the technical director, this was about March last season. Our business has been pretty quick. We got Sancho right at the beginning of the summer, and we know how large the summer before just dragged out forever. Then we got Varane, which nobody really expected. I'm not, I'm not talking about in terms of whether he's a um, uh, kind of a, a, a talent that nobody knows about, but nobody expected that deal just happened pretty, um, pretty quick. And then the Ronaldo one, again, whether people think it's the right deal or wrong deal, we all thought it was going to see the next day join Man United. So again, it was a deal that, didn't drag out, didn't that was a That was a panic one though, wasn't it? it, 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 it whatever it, it was, it was, it was, it was a, done quickly. Yeah, that's the point I'm making. So I, I think now we are, we've we got PTSD. We're looking at what we've done in the last nine years, but, but in the last yeah. year, under the, under the new, bit of figure, uh, under the new structure with Myrtle heading in terms of the football directing thing, I can't look at what we've done so far in this summer when the transfer window opens, what, tomorrow? Maybe, technically, I think. And say, oh, it's a case of Man United dragging out, procrastinating. Darwin Nunes wanted to join Liverpool. That's the bottom line. So every the, the reason why we haven't signed him before Liverpool stood in is because he didn't want to join Man United as his first choice. He would have joined Man United if Liverpool ne were never interested. But are we going to say that Liverpool only became interested and let him know their interest in the last week? No. They've been interested. They probably spoke to him after the Champions League game. But yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool do their business under wraps. Nobody knows about it, which is brilliant. So he wanted Liverpool. And Liverpool wanted him. It was only a case of agreeing a, uh, a fee with Benfica and personal terms. So for me, 
it's like, well, Man United wanted Nunes, didn't get Nunes. Frankie de Jong doesn't want to leave Barcelona. So we can throw as much money down on that table if the, it still comes down to actually convincing Frankie de Jong to leave Barcelona to join Man United. So I think a week into, uh, into June, to, to say that it's another case of Man United dragging things out, I think it's a bit unfair. I think people are getting, a, and Man United fans when it comes to it, are getting a bit over sensitive about, about the fact that we haven't bought anyone in June so far. I think just I, let, I, the, I, let, yeah. it, let it play out, man. I, think I, think the, I echo that. I think, that the, I listen, I think everything that's been said is, is true. Um, on top of that, United have got legacy issues that are going to take time to resolve. The reason that Darwin Nunes is, was more keen on Liverpool than Man United is because Liverpool's posi- they're in a better position than us. You know, proven manager, brilliant squad, title, title challenges every year, pretty much. Champions League finalists three times in the last four or five years. Just won, just won two domestic trophies, were up for a quad. It's a much easier sell. Man United, there hasn't been a player we've signed who has either got better or maintained their levels in nine years. That is a, that's a sobering factor. Where we need to be sensible as Man United fans is to blame that still on the way we've been run, but recognize changes have been made. And I'm not going to judge the approach of Ten Hag and the, and the new kind of director of football and everything else. I'm not going to judge them and, and beat them with the same stick as the previous regime because it will take them time to be able to convince people that we're a better place to be now. And that, that's going to take time. Like if we have a season where we're better, we get back in the Champions League, it's fairly harmonious. Next summer is going to be a much easier period of time to convince people to join because you can prove that they've been impre- Ironically, the year, the summer that we first tried to go in for Jaden Sancho was when Oli had only just become the manager. Jaden Sancho's camp told Man United, no, the club is just after the, the Jose period. It's a little bit chaotic and the turmoil was there. Within a year, he was up for joining because in that period, things were improved. But it's about sustaining it. And it, it is painful to see. Like, I hate the fact that Liverpool, I am worried that we could get De Jong to a point where he's happy to come. And then Man City decide they want him or PSG decide they want him because I can't see a world where right now we fight those clubs off because he's such a good player and they're in better positions. They have great squads, they're challenging for titles. But that's just a a sort of like a cross we've got to bear for a little bit of time. And Man United fans, you've just got to, to, for me, push your anger in the direction. I, I sort of did a tweet yesterday and sort of said, like, when you're buying your shirts or renewing your tickets or buying the merchandise, but you're moaning that we're failing to get these players Remember the Glazers when you're paying, giving them your money still. And one guy was like, why would I be thinking about the Glazers when I'm buying my shirt with my favorite player's name on the back? And I thought, that's why the Glazers are still fine, isn't it? Like, the guy <laughs> couldn't even compute what I was talking about. It's crazy, but... The, the, the reality is, I think Liverpool fans, you can probably um, and, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's a number of players in, in Klopp's first summer that you that weren't your first choice. Salah wasn't the first choice. Uh, no, he wanted um, Julian Brandt, didn't he? Julian Brandt. Did, um, did he want Gertzer as well? Yeah. Uh, out, out, of our, out of our big name signings, uh, Van Dyke was the only one that was like first, first choice. Like Van, like the Klopp and Michael Edwards in the scouting department all agreed on being first choice. Done. I mean, we, we weren't even going to get Fakir. We weren't even going to get Alisson. Sorry, we were going to spend that money on Fakir. And it only took Carius doing his masterclass <laughs> and then panicking. <laughs> That we actually went, you know what? We might actually need a keeper. It doesn't matter who like the necessary first choice is, if you've got a profile that you need to fit. And and it's not deviating from that profile. It's not going mm-hmm. for, for example, a Darwin Nunes and saying that didn't work. All right, let's go for Jesus. And you're like, well, there's two different types of strikers. How the hell are you trying mm-hmm. to play football? So I think we have to accept the main night fans where we are. And if Liverpool come in for a player we want, if City come in for a player we want. Uh, maybe Chelsea. I don't really know. I'm not 100 percent sure. But if they, do, do, those these teams come from a player we want, we're probably going to lose out for it. Let's yeah. not put that on the current regime. Yes, look back and say this is the reason why we are here. But except this is where we are. There's nothing we can do about it other uh, than change what's going on. I, I, I can tell that United fans are getting RC because they all got angry this week about Rashford working out and the music you listen to and Maguire for posing posing with the uh, with the Munich plaque and that's how you know uh Jay thank you for that super chat my friend changing the subject back to Chelsea for a moment I haven't had, spoke to you in a while have hope mm-hmm. Uzman Dembele is now linked consistently linked with a move to Stamford Bridge now you've spoke about Erling Haaland's injury concerns are you concerned about the Uz joining Chelsea with them knees them hamstrings that body and, and everything else. Are you worried? Or are you excited about your favourite player in the world since Eden Hazard joining? <laughs> look, he's one of, he's one of. But look, um, 
the injury thing is a slight concern, but it's worth the, the risk. I mean, it has been very terrible. It's been very tough for me watching this haram ball by Chelsea all through this season, man. You know, so to be able, Chelsea, they need an injection of just so, an, an, an exciting player, a player who can take a man on. And I think what Usman Dembele represents is someone who can bring back that individualism of like, man, just give him the ball and like he can go through, which is, and the logic of holding on to Lukaku is, yeah, Lukaku hasn't, hasn't played well. He's had a really bad season, but nobody has actually provided for him. Usman Dembele no. topped the assist charts for Barcelona, only playing half of the season. I think he only played 15 or 16 games and he ended up yeah. top assister. If you're not providing chances for your striker at a high volume, how is he supposed to freaking score? So my thing though is it's no risk, no reward. Yes, he could get injured and, and so forth, but it's worth the risk. It is worth the risk of going in there and just hoping that Chelsea's medical team and so forth is better than Barca's because Barca's is known to be a trash medical team. So if the medical team can just sort of do better than Barca and just keep him fit for um, the best part of a season, 100%, it's, it, it is a signing that Chelsea need because since William, Chelsea have not had a guy on the flank who can consistently take men on and actually provide crosses. I, I I don't I don't see it. I, I know he's a fantastic player, but for what you if you want to get to competing with Liverpool and Manchester City, you need a consistent attack. The fact that Usman Dembele, I've I've pulled up his injury history here. He's had seven hamstring injuries in three seasons. <laughs> seven of the same injury in three seasons. In, so in, in why are you looking seasons, at the glass half full? You're looking at the glass half full. Man. In, in four seasons, he's missed. I think it's over 85 oh, games. Try half empty, half over empty, 80, half over 85 games. games. That's over two seasons worth of football he's missed. You can't have that if you're trying to challenge Tom, the Liverpool. Okay, 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 Tom. Let me oh, ask you, okay, Tom. Oh. Let me turn the, the, the tables on you. Let me, let me ask you. Mm -hmm. Let me turn the tables on you. So if you're in Chelsea's position and you're seeing the, the garbage that we've had to go through, you say don't go for Usman Dembele because of those injury records. Is I'm that saying, what you're saying? I'm saying if you go for him, you can't rely on him. It, he, you can't expect him to come in needs, and be the main need to, man. He, does he needs need to, to be, be a backup. He does need to be supplemented with other forwards, but he is a forward that you should sign. Because again, that I'm, walk, okay. I'm, I'm, walking, that. I'm walking around right now with Ziyech, Werner, Pulisic. Like, I'm sorry, it's not enough. Yeah, yeah that's the bar's on the floor, isn't it? The bar's low. Maybe your forwards at the moment. The bar's low. Ziyech, genuinely, if Ziyech went tomorrow, I'd be happy. Yeah. Oh no, no, he's been. A you who would keep in your attack? Who would you actually keep in your attack at the moment? Out, it, well, they all need to go. It'd be between Werner and Pulisic simply because I believe you cannot get rid of four forwards and mounts. in one window. And mounts, and mounts. No, 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 you're not getting rid of mount, though. You're not. That's stupid. No, no, no. But no, he asked the question, like, who would you who, who would you get rid of if you, you had cut I'm branch. sorry, have hope. You're actually no, no, no I, it's, you it's more a question of who them. you'd keep. You can't we can't know that you need to get rid of the majority. Who do you, out of that Chelsea attack, who do you keep? Because it's Kai Havertz, it's Mason Mount. Mason no, I keep Havertz as well. And I keep Havertz. You keep Havertz. You, you, keep Havertz. Ha you keep Havertz, you keep Mason Mount. You, keep and Mason then you have to keep Lukaku. <laughs> why? Lukaku why? Because he cost a lot of money. You have, why, why, why do you have to keep him? No, no, no. He, he, no, he was, was having a laugh. He was having a laugh. You actually got to get rid of... I know, obviously, Nick's is captain. You've got to get rid of Lukaku now because the value will keep dropping. Like He's got to go straight back while there's still some monetary value. No, man, have a good season and raise his value. Yeah, yeah, that's going to happen. Oh, wait, did you want him back, Nick? Do you want him back as old travel? No, 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 no. The theatre of dreams. The theatre of dreams. Again, Eric's in half weeks that he needs that, you know, that target man. That's so good point. Yeah, man. Lukaku's the next Sebastian Halle. He's the next Sebastian Halle, man. You mentioned him. I, if the main like that, right now, Terry, you can choose Sebastian Allaire or Lukaku to come in. I honestly would pick Sebastian Allaire. Oh, I'm Terry, you're lying. Oh, Terry, you're lying. Terry, 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 stop capping. No, 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 no. Stop capping. No. You, you choose Lukaku. No, Look, we'll they, they, they would both. They would both fail, but at least one would be cheap. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, they both fail, but I'd rather the one that was cheap. At least you know there's some money left. But at, at least one wouldn't turn up halfway through the season and go, "Oh no, Chelsea was actually quite good. Let me go back there." <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. No, 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 but can I just tell you one thing here? Just this is just to all the Chelsea fans out there and everything. Like, we Chelsea have to stop holding on to this whole academy mindset the thing that really pisses me off is this idea of is this is this sentimental crap that makes me sick so chelsea fans are twerking for rice because he's good mates with mounts and they came to the academy chelsea fans are twerking for conor gallagher 
and what? <laughs> hey! Oh, so, so do I have to like rush my acceptance speech? So look, see, Chelsea fans stop twerking for these dudes. Be real. Conor Gallagher, all these guys from the academy, they're not good enough. They're not elite. Go out and get elite players. What is this? Do you realize that Inter Milan won the treble without a single Italian player in their first team? Do you think Italians are like, oh no, that doesn't count, that doesn't count? It's still an Italian club. So this notion of like, oh no, no, if we, we, we buy English, no. Just buy the best freaking players. Yeah, but and we have we have Man and we have James, who are both from the academy anyway. Get the man the heck out of, Don't put Man to Rich James in the, in the same category. David, let's no, know. David, no, 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 David. No, 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 David let's get rid of no, no, David. No, sorry. I'm putting my, 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 my foot down right now. David, I'm putting my foot down. Let me land. David, let me land. Let No, David, let me land. Let me just land first, David. I'm putting my, my foot down right now, David. First of all, let, let's just get one thing straight right now. Get Mount the heck out of that mega store right now. When I go into that Chelsea mega store, I want to see Rhys James's face there because Rhys James is the face of this of this damn club because he is the real talent from Cobham. I not agree. Cho, not no, Rhys James. No, it is Rhys. It, it's, 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 it's Rhys I James. Cho existed. Oh my god! I so, forgot about him. Yeah, my right. thing though is alone? David. Let us stop holding on to this whole Mount dream, this Conagalga dream. I'm sorry, Mount lost us two finals. It's down well, to him. He well, lost us two well, finals. Well, 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 well nice. David, don't do that. Well, 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 well. Your he talk, did. Talk, have hope. Talk your talk. Well, I, Missed just, about I'm, eight sitters. I'm just, Missed I'm a penalty. Just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, even though I've had my problems with Man, I wouldn't sell him because I just, I, I don't see how that's a smart decision. You know, how much do you even get from him? 30, 30 M's? Are you stupid? That is the English that is, tax. I slap on an extra five. 45, <laughs> 45, 45, 45 M's. Mount, 45 minimum, M's. Mount minimum is 80 mil. Terry, put some kind of memo or something. David, you're on drugs. Especially, David, you're on drugs. 80, 80, 80, 80 mil? Terry, clip that. Terry, clip that. Because he's signing a new contract as well. He'll be. He'll, he's <laughs> David, David. Right, so, 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 so David's trying to tell me that a man. A man who cost his country the Euros by failing to man mark Marco Verratti at the back post and getting beaten <laughs> to a header shit. by him, and then cost his club not one but two finals because when he's played through one on one three times, he finds three different ways to miss and then gets a penalty in the shootout and manages to hit it with the goalkeeper, who is one of the worst at saving penalties I've seen in my lifetime at this club. He is does, he, does, does, Matt have the, does Matt have the clutch gene? No, but he's still like... He's but, been but, 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 but David, you said 80 mil. Plus, David, you're, you're on crack. Like I, I, I would have I would have sent him, so. him out. But Norwich, man. The, the, the point that H, HH has made in the past, and I agree. I don't agree with much he says, so clip this. <laughs> um, is that if Mount is your best player... No, I again, you got a problem. And he's been Chelsea's best player for too long. Exactly. Or, or say best performing player. Now that, that's not on Mount. Mount can only do what Mount can do. But if Chelsea want to get to the next level, then you have to get better. Exactly. And we the, play, the better players yeah. perform better than Mount. Who's where, where, I agree, where I agree. Where I where I agree with 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 half hope in, in in part is. I always want academy. I don't know why. I always want academy players or players we buy when they're young. To, I always have a little bit more time and a little bit more sympathy when in their development, and I want them to do well. But in the cold, hard light of day, it is a player that you can buy. If you could buy Zhao Felix today and he wants to play Mason Mount's position, he's better. You should go and do it. You should always look to improve your team. Something Jess says quite regularly to Arsenal fans, and they hate her saying this because they've got this weird, they're trying to create like a Liverpool cult, and they're just not as good. It's like the B Tech cult, it's not good. And they're like, she says things like, we should never buy backup players. We should just, we're not, we've not got a good enough squad for that. We should be, every player we buy should be to improve the first team. And that's what Chelsea should be doing. It's what Man United should be doing. Now, changing the subject, there has been a tweet put out. I think it's been repurposed by us here uh, from a journalist from Spain who has stated that Frankie de Jong is one step away from joining Manchester United. Barca consider United's offer of 60 million euros plus 20 million on add ons as too important not to accept. So, reports currently out of Spain that it is 
it is steps away from happening. Man United about to pull off one of the greatest oh. central midfield signings since Paul Pogba. Oh, we could does he actually want to leave the? Sorry, does he actually want to leave Barcelona? No, he, does, he doesn't want to go. He, he doesn't no, want to leave. Go. David David Beckham did all right after leaving Man United. Yapstam did all right. It, these things happen. Do you know what I mean? I'm here to no, tell you can, that we don't care. We can, don't can, can, we, can, I, can I not have the classic United that take about three years through transfers? Because I want I need this to be the lead. I need Gavi to start wanting the out and us to swoop in and get him. That won't happen if Frankie Dion goes. They can afford was, his contract then. I think what's interesting Frank. about the Frankie Dion. I get the banner. I do get the banner. He doesn't want to be. Oh. That's right. But at the same time, like Liverpool had to put on the charm offensive to get Darwin Nunes. Liverpool were trying to get too many, but in the end, he picked Real Madrid. Does that mean he's not completely dedicated to Real Madrid because he considered Liverpool? It's really not that deep that a player considers his future. It's like, I get the banter. The banter's funny. You take it on the chin. For me, it's the Man United fans are like, oh, I don't know if I want a player that's had to consider joining us. Mate, it's pretty much what every that's single cap, player... Yeah. In the history of football, does all most, the time. Most players who play for their team don't support that team, so they actually don't care. Of course. Really yeah. The alternative, the alternative is, is Scott McTominay who wants to play for United. So it's like, what do you want? Do you want to play? I like, have to think about it, or a player who's desperate to play for you, but it's shit. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have. He might not be great, but he's got the passion. He's got, got the, the passion, passion that you can't passion. get. He's got the passion. The, the, what I would say is, is that what you don't want is different when you have. Alexi Sanchez and 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 Di Maria situations where they, they they're happy to leave their club, they don't want to join Man United, and you convince them with money. He's no, he's, if it, if it, if the reports were he has he does not want to play in England, doesn't want to live in Manchester, and he hates the color red, then I don't want him because you, you're only bringing him in for money. He hasn't said that. He's just he's just been nice. It's a bit like the Bastoni guy. Bastoni's agent keeps saying he wants to stay. He's gonna stay. As if anybody believes that that's a, that's it now. One hundred percent. Bastoni isn't gonna leave. Does it suddenly mean that if he joins Chelsea, he's only he, he's fake? He doesn't really want to be there. He's gonna be crying all the way to just bullshit. But anyway, we will take the banner. Uh, Terry, that's Marsa. Jesus, you'll believe anything. Now listen, my friend. You know, I've always said this about transfer rooms. I'm just reporting what's being said. And the reason that I share it is because I've got a real big problem when lesser known journalists or publications that are quote, quote, it's being crap, print something on a Monday. And then Tuesday afternoon, a tier one prints the same story. And everyone goes, sassy, so-and-so got it right first. No, they didn't. <laughs> the, the one who printed it yesterday got it right. So a record in, in Portugal, the first outlet nine days ago, 10 days ago to report that, Liverpool were looking at the Nunes deal and they were going to act and going to get serious. Everybody said it was cap. Why? Because a certain tier of journalists in, in the UK didn't say it. They were right all along. So I'm not saying that this story is true. I'm simply saying what's being said. If it turns out to be the case, then this person deserves credit for going out on the limb to, to tweet it and put the news out there. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. We had Tyre this morning. We all know from, uh, from uh, uh, Trafford Tunnel. You know, not many people know who he is, but, you know, put the news out there. Took a risk. Because if it doesn't happen, certain people will come for him because there's nasty people online. It's a lot easier than waiting for the deal to almost be announced and then a friend of yours telling you it's been announced in 10 minutes and you tweet in, done deal. Like, that's not really great journalism. That's something else. But anyway, I'm not going to call people out on that. So chill out, KC. Uh, you're just sad, aren't you? Because one of the best players in Spain's coming to play in the biggest league in the world. You're, you're sad, aren't you, KC, my guy? Um, another super chat here says, uh, the comments... Uh, are like R.I.P. to De Jong's career. That's kind of right. In fairness, there is a chance that he kills his career coming to Man United. <laughs> there is a chance of that. There is I, a chance. I, I know. I know why he's going there because it's Ten Hag. It's working back with him. But if I realistically, if I was to sit there as a midfielder and look at all the clubs, because it won't just be a nice that they're in De Jong. They'll just be waiting for Barca to stop being idiots and asking for so much. If De Jong, if De Jong's sitting there right now and going, I have to go from Pedri and Gavi, two of the best young midfielders in the world, to Fred and Scott McTominay. <laughs> like, it, it, even though he'll still go and he'll still, you know, play United and still try his best, that must hurt. That must hurt on a deep level to go from All right, Tom. All right, that. Tom. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Cheers, mate. Thanks We're for that. trying to buy other midfielders as well, so we don't have to seem like Fred. Yeah, yeah, no, Nunes yeah. and all that. that Wait, oh, you, Van you, you, Van could buy, you could buy a new midfield, though. You could Van buy a new Van midfield. Van, the, Van der Beek, Bruno, De Jong. We'll buy a little bit of Ruben Neves. We're cooking. And, um, that's, listen a, that's a decent midfield still. That's not bad. So when he said it out loud, uh, Wing here says, listen to HH. He's preaching the gospel. Mount hey, is trash. Wing, thank you. Hey. Um, you'd respect Sorry. Mount more if he played as an 8HH. 
No, ma- ma- HH would respect him more if he had a bit more of a tan. Terry, <laughs> I knew you were gonna go there. I knew you were gonna go there, man. Gosh. If it turns, if it t- if it turns out that his great great grandfather was from Lagos, watch Mason, watch Mason Mount something. Terry, do you realize that when I was eleven years old, I went to an international school in Switzerland for for two years. I am the most global person on this panel. So we know. I, I love I love people. On the wall. I told you this guy. This guy went to an international school in Switzerland. The kid I told you, named Sebastian. Sebastian. West Sebastian. That's what Sebastian. He is. Uh, comment here says Spurs will finish above Liverpool if Nunes is the number nine for Liverpool. Well, what is that based on? Why? Wait, 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 wait. You, start, you started something you can't contain. You, you started something you can't contain here. Where is this belief that Tottenham Hotspur bridge this gap? My, my question of is one my player question we sign. My yeah. question is: Is that if Spurs finish above Liverpool, are we saying that Chelsea finish fourth, or are we saying that Chelsea also finish above Liverpool? Because we are no, telling you, you're not in this discussion, mate. We're not in yeah, this no, discussion. No, relax, yeah. relax. Okay. Yeah. 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 Me, you, and, you and Gabriel Jesus can stand over there. For all, I'm saying, all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, relax. No one's talking about Jesus. No one's talking about Jesus. I'm sorry, but, but no, no, no team, team, no team that at the minute has Dyer, Davies. And the Emerson in their back five. I'm including I'm Perisic kidding. and Fraser Forster because they're their new signings. Their back Romero, five currently is Bastoni. Perisic, Dyer, Davies, Romero, and Emerson. That that isn't a top six defense. So you don't believe in the Conte defense? magic. You don't believe in the magic of Conte. I don't know because no, I think Spurs will be a problem next season. They'll be a problem. But to finish above us, manager, no way. But you need you need Jesus. Us. You need Jesus. To get Eric Dyer and Ben Davies and Emerson performing at a level that can compete yeah, with they, Manchester they, 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 City. So, so, so you're talking slick. You're talking slick, but if you lose El Dio, AK Sadio Mane, a guy whose goals got you the most points, and all Salah can mm-hmm. do is stats pad, and Luis Diaz still doesn't know how to score yeah. a 1v1, and Nunes doesn't mm-hmm. really hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. Chelsea could see a little sign. Chelsea could see a little sign. I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, look at a Everyone's battle for, for, for top first. four. Battle for top four could be pending. So, so basically, so, so basically, nah. for, for, yeah, the ba- for, for the battle, for the battle for top four to be pending, you need four of our players to be crap. I'm saying that you know, that's their attack. You're not even talking about a defense as well. You, you need Salah to be at a new low where there's no i the, there's no basis for that to come from. You <sighs> I mean, need Alice, Nunes yeah. to come in and be crap, which there's no basis for. You need Diaz to come in and be crap, which there's no basis for. Oh. What about the other two? Look at this comment. Yeah, look at this comment. It says Chelsea don't have a single player on the level of Kane or Son. Um, if we fill the gaps, we'll be better next season. I mean, that's big... Kante, Silver. No, nah, forward wise though, in their forward line, they're, they're oh, clear. The for- oh, yeah, no, oh, yes. Cap. Okay, uh, yes. Forward's forward line, yes. Yeah. Big enough Spurs here. Like, if Spurs do get Bastoni as an example, if if they if they sign, they've got Paris coming in, they get Bastoni. I, I'm not even going to name the other players, but if they pick up sort of five or six. Kulisevsky, Bentoncourt level players with the way Antonio Conte plays, they could be dangerous in terms of the top four. I don't think they'll challenge for the league, but they could be dangerous. I think they almost guarantee well, themselves a top four position. As of right now, their best midfielder according to most fans is Oli Skip. I don't trust that. Nah, listen, I think the best midfielder. Yeah, yeah, Tottenham the the have a lot of gaps to fill. That's the issue. A lot of gaps. In an ideal world where they fill all these gaps, yeah, they might well do, but they have so many gaps that need to be filled that Chelsea, they aren't going to do Chelsea, it. Chelsea, if, if any if any teams finish around Liverpool, apart from City, it's Chelsea. But you could argue Chelsea got as many gaps to fill as Spurs. Yeah, not really. Well, we we have a tight backs. defense going on. Three you said a second ago, David, and sold the whole front line like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 but, no, but it's like the drop, the but drop. Yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but what, what year? But you need a new midfield Mbappe, as well. It says Mbappe, Mus- Masala, KDB, no, Musiala. Musiala, sorry, Masala, like like I'm only an Indian. Uh, <laughs> what this oh, next no. that on KDB is, is that the legit team of the year? Is that the legit PFA team of the year? Let's me finish the dub. Sorry, finish the dub. Hang on a sec. Uh, Emil Smith, Emil Smith, you like mate? Emil Smith Rowe, uh, Neymar in 20, 2011. Messi to 2013. Could have FC. HH, I've suffered for this club. Could you really have signed all them players? Well, Michelle you could have had. Was, I'm, I'm, our, I'm, I'm not sure about Messi in 2014, but I think for the other ones, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Musiala was in our uh, This is an interesting one. Matt Law says that Chelsea are interested. Sterling at Chelsea, that'd be a good signing. That'd be a good sign. Yeah. I mean, again, he's like a slightly more technical team over now. You're right. You're right. I have hope. So who's, 
<laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, if if you just, if we you got just, like what, what was that? No, 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 no. no. If we, we what was it? If we had the, the DeLorean, and we could go back to 2018 or 2019 and get that Sterling, cool. Sterling in 2022, David, man. Do I have question marks for Sterling? Be your best yes. Easy, However, yeah, I'm right now <laughs> operating with Ziek, with Pulisic, with Vernon. True. Uh, improvements. This is true. Look, baby steps, isn't it? Baby steps. Baby true. steps. Okay. Got to okay. Up, All right. Nah, no, man. This t- this team of the year. Oh my What's, god. Who's in the team of the year then? Who's in the team of the year? Allison in goal. Trent at right back. Van Dijk and Van Dijk and Rudiger. Cancelo left back. Tiago, Bernardo man. Silva, Kevin Howler. De Bruyne, Howler. Mane, Salah, Ronaldo is the front. That's awful. That's awful. That is one of the worst teams of the season. Look at you, Honestly, shameless man at the top. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What, what an amazing quadruple we pulled off. Ronaldo, <laughs> team of the year. 3 P from Eric Ten Hag. FAU Cup. Ahmad winning the FA Cup in Scotland. Man United completing the top of pod this year. Terry, you're shameless. Thiago and Bernardo Silva being there is that's awful. Lado is young with Son. How? The man got gold. Oh, right. I just clocked. There's no oh, human son. There's no son. It's yeah, but you know what? Though? I'm not blaming Ronaldo. That's Ronaldo is a central striker. That Ronaldo didn't keep no, him out. Mane did. Mane did. Yeah, no, no. Mane is just to get out of there. Oh, wait, no, wait, is, wait, no. wait, wait, what is this yeah. agenda against Son? Like this? Hey, why hey, is there an agenda against Son? Listen, I'm just about to say the same thing. Son has he wasn't even nominated for the award. Like, what is going on? There's something Fingers weird. Though, though. Though. When did they do these? When did they do these? Um, these votes because Son only Son went for a bad patch. From like, from like twenty three non penalty goals. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter. Twenty three non penalty goals. He was mad. He was mad. Yeah. Man, it was the most successful of the, the season. The, the, the bad patch yeah. argument yeah. falls apart when Sadio you know, Mane's in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, know what, you know what it comes down. Mane to? was trash. I'll celebrate Ronaldo being on it to wind people up. But I've said for years, whenever people have pulled out the level of PFA awards or nominations that certain midfielders have got versus other certain midfielders, I've always said it's nonsense because these things are popularity contests. The reason that Ronaldo's in it. Is because one, his popularity brings his fans. Plus, they want, especially kids, they want Man United fans to be interested in the results of this. This is what's been going on for years. Man United won a treble, and all the players in contention for player of the year didn't play for Man United, and we won a damn treble. Why? Because if we win the treble, and all our players are up for all the awards, the rest of the country's fan base is stop listening to the awards, stop watching the shows, don't read the articles. It's all a popularity contest. That And Son's out because Harry Kane's the bigger attraction. Simple as that. It's It's wrong. It's not Rodri either. No, Rodri. Rodri a, no, Rodri had a fantastic what season. Was the, what was the midfield again? Uh, Thiago, midfield? Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne. Awful. Awful. I, I've Who's got to be the honest. I, I do not know why no. Thiago Alcantara is in there. I don't not, know. Not trying, they're not obviously not trying to really balance it. because they No, they've just picked. Like, oh, it's, it's just FIFA. They've just picked who's got the best ratings. I, I don't even think Rudiger was Chelsea's best centre-back. Rudiger's not Chelsea's best centre-back. Thiago Silva. Yeah. R- no, Matip should, should have been in there. should have been in there ahead of Van Dijk. Do you remember the hype? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember the hype at the beginning of the season for what's his name? Because uh, he scored in Shalabar. Do you remember how how good he was going to be? Um, oh, I don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, I, I remember how good he was going to be. He scored that screamer. <laughs> um, even Amber Heard will pay twenty five million to get rid of Lukaku. Plus, Paul are too dependent on Salah. If he is injured, you guys are done. Tom, do your homework. <laughs> God. You probably it's do have show. homework at uni. No, nah, I'm done for the year. Uh, this this idea of being dependent on Salah, and if he gets injured, yes, it's a fair point. What? Let Let's go back to the last time he was injured for a lot, lengthy period of time. When he's missed, do you want to know how many games he's missed with injury for Liverpool? I think it's four in six years. Um. So someone someone here said the reason no. that Son's not in the team is because he's xenophobia. Let me just say very quickly, my bro. <laughs> 10 of the 11 players are not English. And if you don't, if you include nationality and skin color, they're all, they're all considered an, 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 a minority in the UK. So there, it's not, there's, there's, not a, there's not a white English player in there. So I won't call it xenophobia. I, it's popularity, my friend. I don't think it comes down to race. I think it comes down to po- a popularity contest. And you've got to fit certain names in there because it, it attracts the viewers. It really does. It's a shame. And by the way, Son's obviously very popular as well, but especially in his, his, his homeland. But... Uh, it's, I remember um, being, I don't know where I was. I was in a different country. I was traveling. And this is obviously, I wonder how big Son is because, you know, remember that Gillette advert they used to have? And it was Tiger Woods, Thierry Henry, and Roger Federer. And it was them all shaving at different times. I was 
like traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think I, was, I was near so I, kind of Thailand. I had to stop somewhere. And it was an ad, the same advert played. And it is exactly the same. But instead of Thierry Henry, man, like part G sung having a shave. It made me, I just, it made me laugh because I've never, I was young and sort of like naive. I'd never experienced the same advert, but like a different, and I thought it made sense really because out here he was like, as part G sung was famous in a lot of the kind of countries in, 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 in East Asia, because obviously like, it's kind of like a representation thing. And he was, like, he was played everywhere. And Arsenal goes, yeah, he's our star here. Like, he's our star everywhere around here. I was like, ah, oh. so Son must be massive, not no, just in South massive. Korea, but across no, across Asia, really. He must but be Terry, huge. I, sorry, Terry, I have to ask. So what is Klopp's role in all of this? Because there's six Liverpool players in team of the year and they didn't win the league. So like Klopp failed. He failed with, despite having the six best, six the, the best players in the Premier League. Uh, no, but we need to define what PFA I means. Like, like, does, does, reach, does, P, does PFA, <laughs> oh, oh, does sure PFA the count the cups or not? Because I, I don't think it should. I, 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 I don't think it should. I think it should be a league only thing. But if it counts the cups, that's why they're in there. Well, because the Premier League is you, worth more than the Carabao Cup and the and the FA Cup. The FA Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think but, we can all agree Thiago shouldn't be in. Thiago Mane shouldn't, shouldn't be in. But yeah, that's two out straight away. The only I think the other four, I think Alison, I think, think Alison oh, yeah. Van Dyke. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, do, do, do the players vote for player of the year? The PFA, they, 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 they vote for the player of the year. I don't know if they vote for the team of the year. But if they do, the maybe, maybe it's true. But even if they do, again, I spoke about it so many times. Do your research, people. Just go onto like YouTube and Google players mocking PFA. I don't know what the word for it is. There's multiple videos of players saying, like, there's one club essentially, this is about 10 years ago. And they said it still goes on. They all voted for Maradona as the player of the year. A lot of them have said what they've done before. Like if their if, if if their rival team has got a player that's nominated for it, they'll like vote for like a like the competitor to win it to wind him up. Players don't take it seriously, which is why it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. What's he saying, Salad? Salah win it? Yes, you yeah, must have done. Player player of the year. Year. Kevin De Bourne, not no, not my player of the year. Kevin De Bourne, not having it. Mo Salah, sure we'll be there we go. Crazy. Well, I can rest easy at night now. Now that I know who's won these fictitious <laughs> awards, his popularity contest. But, I mean, I mean? To, to be fair, Terry, and I hear you. However, as a player, if your peers are voting for you, then you appreciate it, regardless of how, why you got it. I get that. You, you, you appreciate because it, if it's like a journalist or even the fans, you say, oh, thanks. But you might even say, well, they don't really know football. But if your peers are doing it, you'll be like, all right, I'll take that. I won a few Play the Tournament Awards voted for uh, by by my peers. And, um, you know, I take it. <laughs> the thing I is, though, I, 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 I get the point of the um, PFA Awards not being taken seriously. But then you also get the stuff like this season where Manchester City tries to write to them to extend the deadline by a week so Kevin De Bruyne's four goals against Wolves would count. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah happened? I swear that happened. That they, they tried to extend it so Kevin De Bruyne's four goal haul against Wolves could be counted for him to try and help oh push God. him to the award. So that's, it's that's, weird. What, that's, that's what I mean. It's all just like, like, I get it. And I do get your point. It's nice that people vote for you. I just I don't know. For me, it's just care about the trophies you win but maybe i'm just of that generation you know what i mean like when bruno was killing it it was a nice factor but i just listen you could have got rid of 20 of his top performances and half his goals if we'd have won a trophy i'd have been much happier like that's just me but there we go um guys i really appreciate you all coming on really good show lots of things covered the transfer market really starting to pick up and i love the trend honestly the transfer market i buzz off it i buzz more of the people that get angry like one guy just tweeted me because i shared the tweet that's about the, the news about John because your source is a week. It's not my source, bro. I'm just retweeting, but <laughs> I know what people expect. It's crazy. And then he's like, You're shit. He's following me. So weird. I love it though. Keep the hate coming. Uh, until next time, my people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again. We will in a minute. I've lost my mouse. My mouse isn't working. I can't find the button. There it is. <laughs> I couldn't get I couldn't get the mouse up to the end broadcast bit. <laughs> until next time, take care.